Did someone say M3 beta? I never knew it did that. Maybe it likes being launched. Oh, a bit windy. I am 90% certain I've just seen Mr. Chow from the hangover driving a VW Tiguan. windy. Sorry about the wind, if it ruins the sound. So welcome to this POV review of the BMW 335 xDrive. This is the this is an M Sport with the uh, M Sport body kit and this car actually has upgraded alloys which are 18 inches but in ferric grey rather than the standard silver alloys. There is also a, an M Sport Pro Pack that uh, this particular vintage of 3 Series comes with, uh, which has a 19 inch alloy and blue brake calipers. So this car is a 335 diesel X-Drive with the 3 litre straight 6 twin turbo diesel, makes 313 PS, 310 horsepower and 620 newton meters of torque, so plenty of performance on offer. You'll probably hear me say that a lot in this video, but there is. It's rapid. Under the bonnet. So there she is, three litre straight six twin turbo diesel, 310 horsepower and 620 newton meters of torque. And it's mated to the eight speed ZF gearbox, which is really rapid and very smooth. You can see how far back into the engine bay that's the, uh, that's the front, middle of the front wheel there really set quite low as well when you look at the side profile of the car. Obviously typical for BMW handling. Let's have a little look in the back. So that's um, a sensible seat position for me. I'm six foot two um, and that's kind of reasonably comfortable. I do like to have the seat a bit lower and a bit, a bit further back if there's no one behind me, but I can certainly drive the car with that seat position and there's kind of okay amount of leg room. Um, and if you lift the seat up a little bit, you can fit your feet underneath. And this is a, you know, I'm six foot two and fairly leggy and, and there's a sensible amount of leg room there for me. Um, but it is a three series, so, you know, um, not not a huge car overall. Five series is, is the one for you if you want masses of, or certainly more rear leg room. Just a quick look inside at the infotainment system. So it's BMW's iDrive. Um, this one has the Pro Navigation, which comes with a wider screen and also comes with this um, revised whiz wheel, which uh, also has touch functionality. So you can sort of scroll across the map um, using the touchpad, um, which I've turned off actually, because one of the things about it is um, if you if you tap it, it it sort of does the same as if you push the the whiz wheel down which sometimes can catch you out so you can also scroll across the map uh using the uh using the whiz wheel in terms of media um this pro nav has bluetooth media streaming so you can use things like spotify amazon music um and uh, itunes and it's also got a 10 gigabyte hard disk for storing your own music on. So there's a USB connection in the uh, in the armrest. So you can put USB in there and transfer your music onto the hard drive, which is built into the system. Um, there's also a auxiliary in for um, older devices. Lots of functionality on the professional navigation system um, and this it includes traffic information so there's um, some basic traffic information uh, or you can subscribe for about £100 a year to get 
um, more enhanced information. Uh, that subscription's lapsed on this car because this is a 2016 car, um, but it still provides, um, for example, if the M6 is down to one lane, it will give you that information. Uh, just doesn't have the information about the smaller A and B roads um, that might be on the subscription service. Um, lots of other functionality um, on board computer. This car's averaged over 70,000 miles, has averaged 39.8 mpg, which is quite good given the performance on offer. And a um, shorter term trip there of 34, it's more short journeys. Navigation is not active. And obviously Bluetooth hands-free for the phone. There's also something called Connected Drive and there's an app um, where you can um, see things like how much fuel the car's got in it, um, what servicing is required, and also if you do uh, if you if you create a route for um for navigation you can send that from your phone to the iDrive system so when you get in the car you go to BMW messages and um then the last route that you send is available and you can just navigate straight to that um so you can plan ahead really with your journeys car obviously has um dual zone climate control as well and the other thing that comes with the pro navigation is a black something called black panel display which means that you get a bit of extra information about navigation and things like debris in the road or other hazards flash up on there to give you a bit of information and um, this car's also got the adaptive cruise control um, where you can set the distance to the car in front using these buttons uh, and then change the speed with this toggle switch let's go for a drive So just to demonstrate the um, adaptive cruise control, you set, uh, set the system up with this button here and then select the speed using the toggle switch and you change the distance of the car in front using these two buttons and it gives you a representation, um, four different settings, one to four, in terms of how close you'll follow the car ahead. So basically, if you set 70 and the vehicle in front is doing less, then you will obviously just track the vehicle ahead. And then if you indicate to pull out, the system actually accelerates. You back up to the set speed, in this case 70 miles an hour. So it works quite well, it doesn't steer the car at all, so it's just, uh, just speed related cruise control. And then alternatively, uh, if you don't want to follow the cars in front, you just set a limiter to 70 miles an hour, and then you can just sit with your foot fully on the throttle and it'll sit at the speed. Um, and that's just a bit handier if, uh, if there's a bit more traffic, because as you catch, catching up cars, um, the automatic cruise control will actually be slowing down at this point. You don't necessarily want it to do that. You want to wait until an appropriate time to pull out and um, if you just sit with your foot on the throttle against the limiter that's a kind of an alternative to traditional cruise control and it's actually a really comfortable position to have your foot in um, at sort of probably half to three quarters throttle and this car has so much power and performance that pretty much any gradient any motorway in, in the UK it'll um, it'll sit quite happily up against a, a speed limiter of 70 miles an hour so that works quite well as an alternative to normal cruise control because the adaptive cruise control you cannot revert that back to more traditional cruise control so it's always in adaptive mode and that's start stop cruise control the adaptive system so that will come all the way uh, down to a full stop and then with if the car ahead moves forward within about two or three seconds it will set off again otherwise um, you'll just need to tap the throttle or press the um, other buttons of reset which sets the system back up to as it was and then the car will just pull away uh, and follow the car in front. We've got a few different modes, um, Eco Pro which softens the throttle, it's actually quite nice, 
um, in Eco Pro. Uh, maybe it provides a, a bit of an advantage on fuel economy. Maybe not. Depends how, you, how hard you press the, the throttle at the end of the day. But it's it's quite nice. It softens the the throttle, um, makes it easier to drive the car in a more smooth manner because it's um, it's obviously got quite a lot of performance twin twin, twin scroll turbos, um, and that makes it fairly eager to go so uh, lower speeds um, can be a, a bit more jerky in the in the other modes so if you just want to cruise around set in eco pro um, it also reduces the assistance on the power steering a little bit which i find um, means that it it sits nicer in a straight line on um, motorways roads like this and then you've also got comfort which is the default setting when you start the car and and adds a little bit of power assistance so steering's a bit lighter um, and you've got a kind of fairly neutral throttle map and then there's sport um, and sport plus which puts a dynamic traction control setting on um, and that gives you kind of maximum performance away from the line in dry conditions probably best left in sport for uh, for wet conditions and we'll we'll have a little uh, have a little sprint from a standing start just to see what that looks like. When we get a chance. And there's also um, a sport setting for the gearbox and you can take manual control. Um, and in, in sport, it'll still upshift when you reach the limiter and then in sport plus, um, it'll basically bounce off the limiter and you've got, a, you've got full manual control of the gearbox then. So you do that by setting sport and then setting sport on the gearbox and then into manual. So it's fairly typically BMW really. Um, really quite, uh, quite agile. This car, uh, well, the X-Drive cars have standard suspension, so uh, they don't have the sort of M, M Sport lower suspension. So that's the same for the 335 diesel and the 330 diesel. If you've got a 330 diesel with just uh, rear wheel drive, then it, uh, the M Sport car would have a lower suspension. And there was an option to have adaptive dampers on all the X-Drives, um, which probably ties the car down a little bit better. But actually, I think the standard suspension is a pretty good compromise on UK roads. The steering's okay. Um, it's um, electronic power steering, and, and you know probably relatively early in the in the electronic power steering development, and so it's got its limitations. But yeah, it's perfectly adequate, really. Uh, I think uh, this this car's got um, this car's now on um, Michelin Pilot Sport four tyres, and that's made a big difference in terms of grip and and overall handling and um, and traction. stop trying to harass that McLaren I think he probably uh, he might have thought we were uh, the boys in blue I don't want to ruin his Sunday morning blast so I think you can over some of the uh, lumps and bumps uh, and certainly the crest you can just feel the, the standard suspension feels a bit looser probably than um, you would find with the lower M Sport suspension or the adaptive suspension in a in a sportier mode, but um, it certainly does an ov overall does a decent job of coping with bumps. And uh, actually, that's probably what you want on UK roads to maximise the X Drive traction. So I think it works well. ZF gearbox, lots of people have said lots of positive things about it. I mean, it is really brilliant um, compared to, to lots of uh, the competition, it has to be said. And um, yeah, no complaints at all. Really rapid and crisp. hardly 
photography, all the changes. Um, slightly quicker change in, in sport mode, which we're in now with manual mode. You sometimes just feel a little bit more of a uh, shunt. And I think uh, one thing that's um, really quite useful, I think uh, I seem to remember reading this ZF has a kind of a shortcut from eighth gear or eighth ratio down to fourth. And what you'll find is if you if you if you're on a motorway and you're fixed in manual mode, um, in manual and sport, if you're in eighth and doing around 50, 60 miles an hour, uh, and you you pin the throttle and use kick down, it'll drop straight from eighth to fourth, and the acceleration is rapid because you basically drop into the perfect ratio. Um, and and away you go. I never knew it did that. That's ne in four years, five, five years. Never seen it do that. Weird. Maybe it likes being launched. Just another, uh, another little Easter egg. If you. Uh, I don't know how you get the clock up. Maybe you just leave it on the menu system and it, and it does it automatically. But in Eco, he's got a blue kind of uh, theme and in Comfort and Sport and Sport Plus, it's got a red theme, so red clock hands. Hmm. So I just thought I'd try a, a quick sound system test to see what the, um, the standard BMW audio is like. So let's have a listen. racing. Not bad for a diesel. Probably a bit of uh, piped in sound rather than just pure engine sound but I mean when you rev it out it, it revs, revs to sort of 5000 so it's a it's a pretty for a diesel it's a pretty revy engine um, and obviously there's no no lack of performance from it on a wet day the F30 BMW M3 rear wheel drive 0 to 62 in 4.2 seconds. This is 0 to 62 in 4.8. On a wet day, I think the M3 would struggle to uh, show this a clean pair of heels. Obviously, this is no M car, but the performance is there. UK roads all year round, wet conditions. I don't think you can really beat X Drive. 
there's probably an argument for going standard rear wheel drive the 330 d's as, as high performance as you can go certainly in the diesel or the 340i in the petrol which is a straight six petrol and the 3 330d um, which is the highest performance diesel you can get with rear wheel drive um, makes about 260 horsepower and it's just a slightly revised version of this engine single turbocharger arguably uh, a more pure BMW experience with rear wheel drive and um, probably a softer throttle response all, all round at all speeds so there's an argument there's uh, the 330 diesel probably provides plenty of plenty of performance if you're not interested in full all wheel drive certainly consider the 330 diesel um, because I'd say the performance would be more than adequate most of the time fairly practical as well plenty of room for a 700 mil bottle down in the door and um, cup holder oh I see you cup holders slide open there so you can hide them out of the way and it's quite a nice slot for your phone stops it from rattling around it's kind of a sort of rough surface anyway and there's also a, a section ahead of it for um, with like a rubber pad on although the bigger phones don't really fit in there anymore sign of the times well we're back into the uh, traffic now boohoo fun and games over for for the morning so um i think we'll leave the video there hope the video has been of some use to you if you're interested in this vintage of three series particularly the 335 diesel this is the 2016 so the f30 model the f30 is the, the bmw sort of code name for it so i hope it's been useful for you um and hopefully i'll be able to provide some more content very soon <laughs>